I'm just going to spread it out. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure with the spatula side. Sorry, I said I was going to start with the round side. Um, spatula side on my composite, and that's basically condensing it into the side of the tooth. Okay. So I have some excess in there. That's okay. That's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in one of my faucets with the round end. So I'm going to start my distal fossa. I'm going to start with the round end. And I'm going to start, I'm going to use the side of the instrument so the instrument is coming out of the mouth. Okay, I'm not going to use the bottom or the top of it. I'm going to use the side. And this is where I might need Laurel and Dinah's help here to show exactly what I mean. So, all right, I'm going to start my distal fossa. Pressure. On the, on the cable surface margin of the tooth, toe down, almost touching that floor that we made, the composite. And then I'm going to slide along the cable surface margin as I, and as I move up to the top of the triangular ridge. I'm going to flatten my angle out. My toe is not going to be quite so steep. And as I come down off that triangular ridge, I'm going to bring my toe back steep again as I flow yeah, okay. into the lingual groove. Okay. I'm going to keep going so you can see the results. I know there's some excess composite there. I'm going to keep my pressure on the side of the marginal ridge, keep sliding toward this next triangular ridge. I'm going to roll my toe up as I start my ascent up to the top of that triangular ridge. And as I come down into my fossa, my toe gets steep again. I'm going to pull that composite out and you can see the result. Wow. Amazing. Okay. And it's all rolling, which you guys do every day with your instruments. It's all rolling the instrument. So, if you've not done it before, it can be a little tricky. Okay? So I'm going to do it again without, the, without so much excess in there, so you can see it again. And I know Dinah and Laurel are, come, are going to come around, and I'll come around in just a minute, too. So, I'm going to start my distal groove. You can start any or fossa. You can start any fossa you want. Okay? So I'm going to bring my toe down, slide along the cable surface margin. As I as do my ascent for my triangular ridge, my toe comes up. And as I do my descent into my grooves, my, my toe goes back down. I'm going to pivot a little bit. And I'm going to make my ascent back up to my next triangular ridge, making my toe not so steep. And as I do my descent into my fossa, my toe becomes more steep again, and I pull out the excess. Okay. Just kind of letting everybody look at that and talk about it. So, this now you can see that I have some excess is, uh, that's kind of more toward the buckle side. This one faces this way. You see that excess? I'm just going to take that out because it's going to interfere. If I carry it like that, it's going to interfere with my composite that I'm going to place on my buckle side. So I'm just going to take that out. We don't need that. So I'm going to take the toe of my flat side. And I'm just going to bring that in straight down and bring it toward the cured composite. So I don't ruin yes. my anatomy that I create. Yes. 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 Now we have our, the bulk of our anatomy here already. Okay. Hopefully that was pretty. Hopefully that was fairly straightforward. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. So. If any of you played with silly putty as a child or anything like that, as we move uh, from side to side, as we move with some from side to side, and we're pulling the composite one way or the other, it, it the composite underneath kind of travels with it. So I can guarantee you that I have some very tiny voids along this cable surface margin that we'll need to take care of before I cure it. Hopefully it hasn't auto cured yet because I've been talking too long. <laughs> so, 
This is where I use a profuse amount of um, alcohol from an alcohol prep pad, which you all have in your boxes too. And I take the last little bit of my toe of my instrument, and I just pull a little bit of the composite up to the cable surface margin. I don't come all the way down from the central groove, or come all the way up from the central groove, because I don't need to. It's already smooth. There's no need to, and I can end up just making a lot of lines in it instead. Okay? So we don't want to do that. All right. So I'm just going to smooth that down. And then I have this little blip of composite right here. Take off. Two of my biggest rules, by the way, with composite is A, if you don't like it, don't cure it. <laughs> Not going to get better. <laughs> Trust me. Not going to happen. And if you do like it, you better cure it before you mess it up. Don't keep playing with it. Okay? <laughs> so, those are, my, those are two of my big rules. But I don't quite like this yet. So I have a little bit of excess composite, little <coughs> funky things right in here, right in there. So, but those are right where I want my supplemental groove. So, to answer your supplemental groove question over here, I can put those in. I'm going to use my condenser end once again. And with light, light, gentle pressure, I'm going to find the little the indentation on my tooth, which is right about here in the distal, distal lingual. Pull in the central groove with light pressure. I'm just going to pull out, and there's my supplemental groove. That look okay? Okay. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing on the mesial lingual cusp. So I'm going to find the depression that indicates the supplemental groove here. Hopefully that's looking all right. Sometimes it looks different on the big screen than it looks here in, in real life. In, in uh, yeah, in real life, I guess. So. <laughs> all right. So there's this little blip of composite that I don't like. I'm going to take that out. Yeah, I think we can cure that. If you like it, cure it, right? One of three ways. I prefer to do half the tooth and then the other half of the tooth. They meet in the central groove. You can do the whole of two occlusal table if you want to, but there's more to mess up if you make a mistake. So, but if it works for you, that's fine. Okay. If neither one's working for you, I have some people who like to do it cusp by cusp, and they can use the same technique, just doing one cusp at a time. So, it's flexible with you. Okay, you can do it however you prefer. Turn my type of knot here so I can reach the buckle a little bit easier. And the buckle is just going to be the same, same thing. So I'm going to use the rest of my composite. I end up using about an ampule for at least demo and purpose, what, for, what our purposes. I use any, I don't know, I can't talk now. I end up using about an ampule per, per tooth. So I, you have you should have an ampule per tooth that you have in your bag, maybe a little bit more. All right, same principle. This time for me, it's easier to start in the mesial and go distal. Will work either way. Okay, so starting steep, pressure on the cable surface margin, coming up my center of my triangular ridge, bringing my toe up. As I start my descent into the buckle groove, toe down. I'm going to make sure that it's not meeting the pointing toward that lingual groove. I do not want the buckle groove, that medial, mesial buckle groove, and the lingual groove to meet. So I'm making sure that my groove does not point to the lingual groove. I send up and over. And as I come into my distal lingual groove, I need to pivot. The distal buckle groove, excuse me. I need to pivot so that I come in there obliquely. It's an oblique loop. All right, and then up and over this little tiny triangular ridge. If I can get them. Right there. So, had a lot of excess in there, 
so I have to do it again. That's fine. I don't, didn't like it mesial to distal because my arm of my, or the, technically where the patient's ramus is going to be was in my way. So we're going to do it the other way. All right, so I'm going to start distal, up and over. And you can see I already had a void start. That's not uncommon. going to just, I don't like the smoothness of this particular cusp or the lack of smoothness, so I'm just going to focus on that cusp alone. I use my alcohol prep pad to prepare my instrument, and I'm just going to smooth it like so. That's a little bit better. And I think I'm going to use my flat side to kind of finish the job here. That's a little better. the shape, that need, the Y shape that needs to be here. So I make my grooves a little angled with the toe of my flat spatula side. I have some roughness here, a little unusual for me, but that's okay. Life goes on. And I'm just going to do some smoothing strokes. I'm using the edge of my flat instrument to define my grooves a little bit more. So I'm putting the edge in my groove and pulling out. The, side, the flat side of my instrument on the triangular rig, groove, uh, edge of my groove, and I can make nice defined grooves that way. I like this instrument because it's nice and flexible, has some good flexibility to it. I prefer it over the Greg. That's my preference. If you like the Greg, you will get Gregs in, your, in the kits, kits that you borrow from me. So if you like Gregs, please use them. This is my preference. So, All right. So. I, I like this, so I'm going to cure it, but I don't like that distal, distal uh, fossa, so I'm going to fix that in a minute. We'll get that looking good. that little bit of composite in there, smooth it out. And then I'll, I'll pass it around, you guys can take a look if you'd like. And we'll take probably a 10 minute break, you guys have been sitting and listening to me talk for a while, so. <laughs> I don't know, my students find it pretty trying. So, <laughs> speed okay? I'm not talking too fast. Okay. All right. So I'll just start here and pass it around. You guys can get up, take a break, come back, look at it, whatever you'd like to do, and we'll start again. Let's say five minutes to eight, and then we'll just do the last little bit. Is there bending anywhere? Bending? No, unfortunately. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I should have brought water. I know.